Hi, I'm James with British Customs. Today we're going to install our competition header and slip-on exhaust on this 2021 Bonneville T100. We start by taking our seat off, using our 10 millimeter wrench and an 8 millimeter socket. We take the tank bolt out. All right, we're going to start <clears throat> by removing our battery negative cable. You can use a 10 millimeter or a number three Phillips head screwdriver. And this is the black wire, not the red one. You always want to remove the black one first, which disconnects the battery from the bike. If you disconnect this one first and you arc it out on the frame or something, then you're going to ruin your tool and you're going to ruin your frame, possibly the battery. So always disconnect your negative first. If you disconnect the negative, you don't need to worry about the positive side. Just push it out of the way somewhere so it doesn't connect to the battery. <clears throat> I like to put the screw back in so I don't lose it. And you don't lose the nut from the battery either. So now we're going to pull our tank back. It helps to set a rag back here to rest this on so you're not scratching your tank up, you're not damaging anything under there. You also want to have rags ready to stuff up under here so you're not scratching your tank or your engine. Lift it up and pull it back. Pull the rag up under there. You only have to go back enough really to expose the wires here so we can disconnect them. Okay. Okay. Now we want to remove the wire guide here. This is our T30. So then we pull the guide out of the way, and then there's an inner cover here you want to pull out, get to that screw, remove that, now we want to remove these two screws, again with our T30 Torx bit. Pull that guy now off. All right, now what we want to do is disconnect our O2 sensor, which is this plug right here. You pull on a little bit, you can see which plug moves, you know which one it is. Pull this out of the way. And there's a little tab right in the back here that's holding this down. And now you want to just lift up on that tab there, and you can separate them. Now we can pull it through. Again, you can wiggle the wire, you see which one's moving. So you know you're getting the right one. Pull this one out of the way. Come to the top there. Pull that out. Pull the tab up. This side's a little tighter than the other side. OK, 
Okay. So now we want to remove the heat shield clamp here using our five millimeter Allen bit. Now we want to remove our flange nuts using our 12 millimeter socket. And this is a two piece clamp on here. So you want to hold it, make sure it doesn't separate and fall, scratch something up. Next, we want to loosen this clamp. It's a 10 millimeter nut. Easiest with a ratcheting wrench. If you don't have a ratcheting wrench, you can do it, you know, one quarter turn at a time. Okay. Now we want to remove the clutch cable bracket here with our eight millimeter socket. And these bolts are two different lengths. So make sure you put them back in the same spot. The long one goes to the front. I'm gonna remove the shift lever now. Remember this little dot lines up with the opening of the bracket. So when you put it back, use our eight millimeter wrench or ratcheting wrench. And the bolt has to come all the way out to pull this off. So the reason why we want to take all this stuff off, for one, it makes it easier just because it's out of the way, but you can see scratches from this coming off previously and the shifter peg probably wasn't taken out of the way and it gets scratched up. So if you want to protect the pipe in case you want it for the future, or if you want to sell it or something, then you should take that off. For extra measure, I like to tape it up as it comes off, just in case it rubs against something. I don't have to worry about it getting scratched. And you want to do the same thing here so we don't scratch our cover. Now we can just pull this off. So now we want to remove the heat shield clamp here using our five millimeter Allen. Now we want to remove our exhaust flange nuts, the 12 millimeter socket. Remember this is a two-piece clamp, so hold on to it as you take the nuts off so you don't drop it. So now again, we're gonna move this clamp. This one I'm gonna do with a regular wrench, 10 millimeter, because I can't fit my ratcheting wrench up in there on this side. And if you do scratch this, if you have the polished version, you can get it repolished. If you got the brushed, you can just take some 3M and clean it up fairly easy. But you really want to just avoid scratching it all together. There we go. So now, if they haven't fallen out already, you want to remove your exhaust gasket. I'm just going to put a rag in there. Just keep anything from getting in there. 
I'm going to remove that gasket. Just stuff a rag in there. So next with our six millimeter Allen wrench, a bit, take this clamp, loosen it. Then with our 12 millimeter socket and our 12 millimeter wrench, put the wrench on the nut back there. So now we need to remove the nut off the back side here, and there's a bolt going through. So to access that, we need to take the foot peg off. You want to hold it in place as you pull that pin out so that you don't lose that little bearing right there. Keep your hand under it when you come out with it. So with our six millimeter Allen and 12 millimeter wrench, we can now take that off. Now you just wanna gently bring it in this way so you don't hit your swing arm and pull back. So now we wanna loosen this clamp, our six millimeter Allen. So here, I'm gonna show you a little shortcut so that you don't have to pull the pin on here. Put your 12 millimeter wrench on the back side. And if you apply pressure down here as you're doing it, it should keep that bolt from spinning so you can get the nut off. If you're not applying enough pressure, that bolt will start spinning. So you just wanna keep pressure down on it. Turn it in, pull it back. So now before we remove these frame rails, we need to get all this stuff off of them. So we're gonna remove the regulator using our eight millimeter wrench. Remove one on the other side. Now we want to unplug it, press down on the tab there, pull it a little bit. Get reach from that side. So now we want to cover our fender just to protect that while we're working over here. Throw a rag, throw a little tape on there and make sure it doesn't fall off. With our eight millimeter socket or ratcheting wrench, you can pull this screw out. So now we want to take this bolt out here, it's a 12 millimeter. Get our 12 millimeter wrench on the back side. Now we want to remove this bolt here. Got your eight millimeter Allen. There's a 14 millimeter nut on the back side. Okay. So now we want to remove this bolt. We got a nut on the back side, it's 17 millimeter. 
and your T55 Torx bit. Try and loosen it up without the wrench first. There you go. You just get that in there, keep it from spinning. So now we want to remove this bolt. You got a nut on the back side. Use a 14 millimeter wrench to get in there. It's, it's a little tight. Getting in there. You want to protect your tank, just get a rag in there. Now with our eight millimeter Allen, loosen that up. And it could be helpful to just put this bolt back in here. Just to hold this up so it doesn't fall. Now we can pull this bolt out while we're holding the rail up. We can lower it down. It's going to be inside that grommet there. So you kind of have to pull it out of there. So now we need to pull the side cover off here so that we can access this plug which goes to the kickstand switch. And when we remove this frame rail, we don't have to remove it all the way, but we gotta let it hang enough to pull this pipe out. And this won't require, this will require more slack. So we wanna just unplug it and pull it down. So you wanna push down on this tab right here and then just pull it a little bit. So right here, there's a wire guide that that wire is running through. So you want to make sure that you end up back in there when we go back together. So now we want to take these two screws out with our eight millimeter Allen. You don't need to hold the nut in the back. And the reason why you don't have to hold the nut in the back is because the two nuts here, as long as you loosen them both before you pull them out, you'll be fine. So now with our T55, loosen that, and we can get our 17 mil in there and hold the nut. Take the nut out, let's just leave the bolt in there. So now with our eight millimeter Allen, Loosen that, and now we get our 14 millimeter wrench. Hold the nut. And if you lift up this piece here, it'll give you access to the nut. And we can pull this screw out.
Pull the frame rail down a little bit. And now we're ready to remove the cat. So with a 12 millimeter socket, remove this screw. Before I go any further, I just want to throw some tape up here and protect the frame so it doesn't get scratched up. Okay. So now with our 12 millimeter socket, Take this one out. Now we want to push that way to get this pin out of this rubber bushing after we pull it down a little bit. We got three bolts on the bottom here holding this plate up, 12 millimeter. So now we can start putting the rails back up again. You want to make sure you're getting this pin back into the radiator. Put that bolt in to hold everything in place. All right, this is about the hardest part of putting the rail back on is getting the nut on the back side there. So if you take your 14 millimeter wrench with your angle part heading this way and you come between these wires into the outside of those wires, then you can get your wrench back there. So if you hold it here and now put the nut in, guide it down, get it on the back side there, and you can kind of see where it lines up in the hole. Get your bolt through and thread it in by hand. If you can't thread it in by hand, you don't want to just take a wrench to it. You want to know that it's not cross threading at all. So now I know I'm going in by hand and it's, it's working nice. So now I can get my wrench on it. So now with my eight millimeter Allen, I'm not making it all the way tight yet. I'm just going to Snug it up. Okay. So now you got, this is the slack that we pulled from the wire when the rail went down. So you want to make sure you, you pull that up. And now we can put these two screws back in. our eight millimeter Allen. Bring our side stand wire back up.
plug it back in. And we just want to tuck the wire back into the guide here. Put the side cover back on. Get these three points need to line up with those grommets and just push in. So now we can get our wrench in there, 14 millimeter and our 8 millimeter Allen. Snug that down nice and tight. And now we'll torque it down. 40 newton meters. So now we can torque these two down, 8 millimeter Allen, torque to 40 newton meters. So now we can put this nut back on this bolt. A 17 millimeter wrench. Hold the nut, our T55 Torx bit, tighten it up. We'll get our torque wrench. Now we can stick the right side frame piece in. Again, make sure you're lining the pin up with the grommet on your radiator. And put the center bolt in. Now you want to get your 14 millimeter wrench, put your nut in there, make sure the hole is lined up, and make sure you can thread it in to the nut by hand so that you're not cross threading anything. That's in there, now I can get my wrench, my 8 millimeter Allen. I'm just going to snug it up for now. Okay. So we get our nut, we'll put it on the back side here. Get the bolt with our 8 millimeter Allen. Start threading it. Get our 14 millimeter wrench. So hold it with your 14 mil, your 8 millimeter Allen, and torque to 40 newton meters. So now we do the top one. Again, hold the nut, your 14 mil, your 8 millimeter Allen. Torque it to 40 newton meters. Hold the nut with the 17 mil. T55. Tighten the bolt down. Now with our torque wrench. Can tighten to 105 newton meters. All right, we're gonna put the oil cooler fastener back in. Make sure you got your top hat spacer in there. And 
with your eight millimeter wrench. Yep. So now we're going to put the regulator back in. I'm going to plug it in before we try and fasten it down. Make sure you hear it click and you know it's locked on. And one fastener. With our eight millimeter wrench. So now with our 17 millimeter wrench, we want to take out our row two sensor. We want to put a little anti seize on the threads. You don't want to go crazy with it. You don't want to get any on the sensor itself. You just want it on the threads. Thread it into the new pipe. Tighten it down. All right, do the same thing for the other side. 17 millimeter wrench, loosen it up. Fresh anti seize on that. Seventeen mil. Tighten it up. So, one thing you want to do before you put them on is Pre-fit the pipe that goes in between. That way you know for sure that it's fitting. But we use really tight tolerances and if, when you get it on the bike, you might feel like there's no way they're gonna fit. But this way you know it definitely does fit. So start off with it in one side and then you only have to fit the other. If you find one that goes easier, make that the one that you fit after it's on the bike. So now we can fit our exhaust gaskets. And these aren't a tight fit in here, so you need something to hold them in there. So you could just put two little dabs of grease on them. You don't want to put a bunch of grease. It'll be smoking forever. You just want a little bit will burn off as soon as you fire the bike up. And then it just keeps it in place. Do the same thing on the other side. So two little dabs of grease on there. Actually, let's just clean this out first. So now we need to remove this bolt here. Put our kickstand down. So now we can bring our pipe in. So now in the kit we got two washers, a bolt, and a spacer. We want to put one washer on the screw screw through. Get the spacer on there. And then the other washer, and this is important that you don't leave this washer out because the spacer needs that washer to clear 
the bracket in there. No six millimeter Allen. Just make that a little snug right there. So now we can install the exhaust flange. These two pieces fit over each other like that. The slot here goes over the O2 sensor. So you want to put that to the top. Slide them on. Put the nut on. Put the other nut on. We don't want to tighten this up yet. We just want to just make it snug. Bracket back on. The long bolt goes to the front, short bolt goes to the back. Socket. I'm going to make sure that this sleeve here is installed. So now we can slide our exhaust in. I want to make sure that this bottom tube here is going into place. So now this washer that we removed before, that's going to go back on the back side here. You use the stock bolt that came out. Then we need to put the nut on the back. Twelve millimeter wrench, twelve millimeter socket. Just snug those up. Now we want to put our flange back on. Slot goes to the top over the O2 sensor. Slide into place. One nut on, the other. A 12 millimeter socket. I'm just going to snug this up. So now we want to put our springs in place. Using a spring puller. That one there. And then get this one on this side. Now we can torque this bolt down, 24 newton meters. Got a 12 millimeter socket, hold it with your 12 millimeter wrench. So now we want to tighten to 19 newton meters with our 12 millimeter socket. Then we can tighten this one, six millimeter Allen, 24 Newton meters. Okay, now we can tighten our 
exhaust flange nuts, 19 newton meters, 12 millimeter socket. Now we line our shift peg back up. Make sure these are in line, like right there is not proper. And that is, it's easy to go one tooth off. With our eight millimeter wrench, just gonna tighten that. Now we need to put the O2 sensor plug back up. And plug it back in. You want to hear that click so you know it's locked. Yeah. And one thing we want to do is you want to make sure it's coming in underneath this red taped wire there. You can pop it back down there. And then we can put this one back in here. Wire guide back on. Like that. To the other side. So now we can put that guy back there and run our O2 sensor plug back up this way. It does help to take pictures of the way everything looked before you took it apart so that you know you're going back together correctly. T30. Put that screw in. Put that piece in the back. And 
bring this piece up here. Make sure your brake line is routed through this top portion there, and that you're not pinching any wires. Again with the T30. Now we can push our tank back forward again. Before you tighten it down, make sure you can get your rags out of there. With our 10 millimeter wrench and our eight millimeter socket. Tighten this up. And torque this down to eight Newton meters. So this system was designed for British custom slip-ons. We're gonna install the Predator Carbons on this. If you're interested in seeing how to install the slip-ons, Go check out our channel. So now we're going to connect the battery. Take our screw back out. Put the seat on. So now it's very important that we wipe down the pipes with some alcohol. Make sure we have all our fingerprints and stuff off of there because any oils, any fingerprints will burn into this as soon as you fire it up. So you want to get it good and clean first. Okay, now we're going to fire it up. 